let's take a look at another example of using L'Hopital's rule. So here we're going to do the limit as x goes to 0 from the positive side of x to the x. Okay. So these parentheses aren't really necessary, but I'm just putting them there for clarity. They don't really hurt. Okay, so if we do direct substitution, like we always want to do first, what happens? Well, as x goes to 0 from the positive side, this whole expression just goes to 0 raised to the 0, which we know is one of our indeterminate forms, so that makes us sad face. But that actually kind of makes us happy face because that tells us we can use L'Hopital's rule. Okay, But again, we can't use it directly because we didn't get 0 over 0 or infinity over infinity. We got 0 to the 0. But that tells us that we can maybe do some algebraic manipulations on x to the x so that maybe hopefully we can eventually get to a form that gives us 0 over 0 or infinity over infinity. Okay, so let's go ahead and try that and see what happens. So ones like this are actually kind of tricky. So with the exponential stuff like that, they're a little bit tricky. What we want to do is something kind of weird that we might not normally think to do and is something that's actually kind of backwards from what we've done in pre-calculus courses. But remember from a pre-calculus course that if we have e to the natural log of some thing, then we just get that thing back. So we're actually going to use this property, but in reverse. Okay, we're going to use it in reverse. So if we're going to, what we're going to do is start with x to the x, and we're going to say, okay, that equals e to the natural log of x to the x. Okay. Now, how does that help us? Well, it doesn't really help us yet. We're not quite there yet. So there's also a property that says natural log of, let's say, a to the b equals b times the natural log of a. So if we have an exponent inside of a log, remember we can pull it out uh, like that. So here we have natural log of x to the x. Okay, so that's going to be x times the natural log of x. So then this really equals e to the x times the natural log of x. Okay, now how does that help us? Well, we're almost there. So that helps us because, well, the next step then is remember when we first started learning about limits way back early in the calculus course, um, let's go ahead and get rid of this here. Remember there's a property that says limits can be pushed into and pulled out of continuous functions. So if you have uh, some continuous function, in this case we have e to the x times the natural log of x, this is a continuous function on its domain. And so what we're doing really is we're taking a limit of this function. Okay. So why is that? Well, here we have limit as x goes to 0 of x to the x. So we have limit as x goes to 0 from the positive side of x to the x. We just saw that x to the x equals this expression over here. So this limit then is equal to the limit as x goes to 0 from the positive side of e to the x times the natural log of x. Okay. And again, e to the x times the natural log of x, uh, if we take e and raise it to a thing like this, that's a continuous function. So what that means then is that the limit can be pushed inside of the exponent. Because remember, limits can be pushed into and pulled out of continuous functions. Taking e and raising it to this thing here, that's a continuous function. So we can push the limit into there. So this gives us e to the limit as x goes to 0 from the positive side of x times the natural log of x. So now all that's left to do is evaluate this. Now, we actually did this limit here. So without the e, we did this limit in the previous video when we talked about example 4, I believe it was. So this limit right here, we actually did that. And we saw that limit as x goes to 0 from the positive side of x times the natural log of x, we got that that equals 0. So I don't want to go through the details again here. It did take about 6, maybe 7 minutes. So I don't want to duplicate all that in the very next video. So if you want to see the details of this, uh, please go ahead and check out the previous video where this is talked about in detail. So using that result, we come back here and we say, okay, this equals e to the 0, which is just 1. Okay. So I'm not going to go through the details of this here, but I will just give a brief overview. So if we do direct substitution, we're going to get 0 times negative infinity, which is a variation on one of the indeterminate forms. So that tells us we can do some more algebraic manipulations to use L'Hopital's rule. Okay. So if we do some more algebraic manipulations, we can rewrite this x times natural log of x in a form that will give us uh, infinity over infinity. I think it was minus infinity over positive infinity. And then that's an indeterminate form that tells us we can directly use L'Hopital's rule. But again, that's all covered in the previous video, so I don't want to go through the details again here. But the point for this video is that this limit equals 0, covered in the previous video. So this whole limit from here okay, equals e to the 0, and e to the 0 is just 1. 
So what we just found out then is limit as x goes to 0 from the positive side of x to the x equals 1. Okay. So that's actually kind of interesting because even though 0 to the 0 doesn't have a numeric value, it's an indeterminate form, what we just saw is that this limit as x goes to 0 from the positive side of x to the x, that does have a value and it's 1. So that's kind of interesting there. So that's another example of L'Hopital's rule. Some more examples coming up in future videos.